Today we are still in the book of Genesis and we are still reading the story about the Israelites. Today we find ourselves in chapter 45, verses 1 through 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those he stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. And then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son of Joseph. Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as their flock, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, this, his brothers talked with him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. I'd like to use a sermonic theme this morning, wearing forgiveness, wearing forgiveness. Alexandra Rosa and her family came to America from Dominican Republic. Her mom, being an alpha-like personality, got a job, went to work, and began assimilating into American culture. Her dad, more of an introvert, was unable to find work and drifted into depression. Alexandra comes from a big family of five siblings and found it hard to get individual attention from her parents. So when her dad would go to do the groceries, this became her alone time with her dad. On Thanksgiving Day, her mom and dad had had an argument, and then her mom had sent her dad to the store to buy a traditional dinner. In the store, he had picked out all the things on the list, and when the cashier announced the amount, he walked out. She went along with him. 
One of the things that Alexandra loved about going on this trip with her dad to the store is that after they did the groceries, they would always go to the tavern. When she was coming up, it was okay for kids to be in the tavern. Of course, that's another day. But back then, when she was young and seven years old, it was okay to go to the tavern. And so after grocery shopping, her and her dad would go to the tavern, and her dad would always, this was the regimen. He would order himself a beer and order her a candy bar. Now in a big household like hers where always at home they had to split up a candy bar six ways, this was the treat. So on this day when her dad left the groceries, she didn't care anything about the groceries. She was like, let's just stick to the plan, go to the tavern where dad can get his beer and I can get my candy bar. When they arrived at the tavern, something changed. Her dad ordered the beer, and that was it. She tried to wait. She tried to be patient. But eventually, she pulled at his side and said, Dad, mi chocolate, mi chocolate. After a while, she tried again. Eventually, after trying to get her dad's attention to buy her chocolate bar because that was part of how they operated, a stranger seeing and looking on bought her a candy bar. Well, she had been taught how you would to operate towards strangers. And she knew at this moment that she probably wasn't supposed to touch the candy bar. But after looking at the candy bar for a period of time, she couldn't resist. And she shoved the candy bar in her mouth. And then her dad got up and left. When they got to the house, her dad dropped her off. And she disappeared, as she often did into the house of a big family. Later that evening, the cops pulled up, and when her uncle opened the door, the cop said, he did this to his family? At the funeral, many people asked questions about why her father did what he did. She ran and hid in the back of the church because she knew the answer. And she knew if somebody asked her, she would have to tell them why her dad did what he did. She knew that it was the candy bar. For five years, Alexandra would not speak, would not say a word. And for even longer, she would carry this burden around that she knew the truth. She carried this, this heavy burden and quiet guilt with her secretly. We're talking this morning about wearing forgiveness. We enter the biblical text, and if you were with us last week, you already know what the brothers did. This is a text about Joseph and the brothers, and often we hear a lot about Joseph, but today we linger in the presence of the brothers who are not as much talked about. Years have passed since they delivered that awful news to their dad, or actually, <laughs> presented his clothes torn, leaving their dad to come to his own conclusions. Years have passed since the brothers had sold their own brother into slavery. Years had passed and families had made, been made and babies had been born and crops had been turned over and life had moved on and now there was a famine in the land. And then there was Reuben, the oldest brother. He was the oldest brother. He had been raised by his mom and his dad to look out to watch after. He had listened to his brother's plot to bring harm to Joseph, and he understood what he was supposed to do. He had felt their hatred, their jealousy. He knew that he couldn't change his, their mind, but he watched with a watchful eye as his brothers began to plan what they were going to do to Joseph. And so he knew they were determined to bring harm, and he would simply just scoop around. The plan of their brothers was to drop him in a well and leave him there. And Reuben decided he'd just let them think that their plan was the plan. And he would just come around later in the evening and scoop Joseph up and return him to his dad. But the brothers changed the plan. And after Reuben was gone, they decided when they saw Egyptians walking along that they wanted to make something off of this. And so they sold their brother into slavery, got a little bit of money on the side. And when Reuben came to pick Joseph up, Joseph was not in the well. Imagine when Reuben returned the older brother always handling and taking care of the bad decisions that his brothers made, that the one brother he was supposed to be looking after was gone. Imagine when Reuben returned to make the best of a bad decision and he saw that his brother was gone. 
He knew the truth, but the truth would kill his dad. And so he didn't tell his dad. And he carried a guilt, a heaviness, a weight around. He carried a bad choice to himself. He could see what Rachel's loss had done to his dad. He could see what Joseph's loss had done. And he knew that the only thing he could do with his own pain was carry it inwardly. How often we carry so much around that is heavy and laborsome. There's a famine in the land. That means no food. That means starvation. That means that times are harder. That means that we have to cut back. That means that we cannot be as luxurious. That means we worry about how the rent is going to be paid, how the bills are going to get paid. That means hard times. And so Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, learns there is grain in Egypt, Egypt and sends his sons to get some so that they might live, that they may not die. And Joseph recognizes the brothers that sold him into slavery right away. But the brothers don't recognize him. And I know you just read with me Genesis 45, but just for the fun of it this week, go back and read Genesis 41 through 44 because Joseph has a field day with his brothers. Oh, he plays games with them. They bow to him not knowing it's Joseph. So Joseph plays around with them, except it's not funny to them. He puts them through a little hell made up by himself personally. He puts them through mental tricks. He plays with them. He puts them through mental agony. He sends them back and forth to their dad. Now, personally, not that anyone's asking me, but I think Joseph is paying them back. After a couple of days of messing with them, we arrive at Genesis 45, where he reveals his identity. Imagine the guilt. Imagine the guilt that his brothers feel, imagine the guilt that Reuben feels when they realize that this is their brother Joseph. Now I have a lot of questions and like you, you should probably have some questions as you're reading this text. Why didn't somebody, anybody, everybody look for each other? But that's not really where the text is taking us today. Like Jacob was re reconciled with Esau, the brothers are now being reconciled with Joseph. Joseph cries first away from them. He cries away from the people. He is so laden with grief. And then he cries again. He can't ignore the feelings that overwhelm him when he sees his brothers in front of him. I imagine there is joy, but I imagine that there is great sorrow. Who sells their brothers because of a dream? Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. This text tells us that this was no short cry. He went away and he cried. He came back and he cried. He cried loud and he cried long. He cried so loud that the Egyptians heard him. He cried so loud that the people in Pharaoh's household heard him. Crying like that, crying loud and long like that comes from deep wells of reserve, places of pain and hurt. And the brothers can only stare. They are speechless. I'm sure there was regret and pain and heaviness on their part as well. Reuben, the older brother, had never been able to shake what had happened, and now here it was. Joseph said, it's okay, it was God's plan. That's just man talk. God's plan or not, there was a lot of pain to go around. And then he cries first with his younger brother, Benjamin, who had nothing to do with all of the nonsense, and then he cries with his brothers that sold him. And then he pulls in his older brother, Reuben, and he cries some more, and love overwhelms them. They are still family at the end of the day. Sometimes we look up and we find that we are still family at the end of the day. In my home, I have a medium-sized trash can. It could be bigger, but it holds enough. And every couple of days, I empty it out. It gets full really quick, and you cannot let just trash stay in. In other households, I've seen people use small plastic bags that they get from the grocery store in addition for stuff that creates a smell really, really fast. And so they really, really need to take it out. You see, certain trash items are known to cause a scent, and that scent causes an odor, and it spreads throughout the house. So for most of us, if you want an odorless house, usually you have some kind of practice of taking the trash out. And so it is with forgiveness. We not only forgive others because forgiveness is not just a one-way street. Forgiveness is a two-way street. 
and when we must do it frequently, this business of taking out things that have settled on our heart. Erica Badu reminds us that carrying around all that unforgiveness leads to bags that hurt our backs and our souls. Have you taken out the bags recently? Does your trash stink? <laughs> Can we have an honest conversation? Sometimes we are forgiving others, but also more importantly, sometimes it's important we forgive ourselves, lest we carry around trash that stinks, that spreads. And that's what these brothers needed to do. The brothers needed to forgive themselves. They needed to forgive themselves for what they did to their brother. They needed to forgive themselves for the cost of what they had done to the whole family. Reuben needed to forgive himself for not being the brick brother that he was trained to be. And the work of forgiveness is frequent because before you know it, there's more trash or something that got left behind. And this act of taking out what rests heavily on our hearts is continual. Sometimes the real work is not extended outward, but it's focused inward. We need to accept that forgiveness that is offered and the forgiveness that Christ offered us. Sometimes it's easy to focus outward on the act of forgiving others. And sometimes it's so much harder to do the work of forgiving ourselves. Yes, I made that decision when I was mad. Yes, I acted out of my own insecurity. Yes, I messed up that situation. Yes, two wrongs do not make a right. I really messed up, which was what the brothers had done. They had messed up. Their hatred of their brother and their father's love for that brother had pushed them too far. So a pastor friend of mine has two fraternal female twins. I remember him showing up at meetings with two girls in tow, two baby girls. And I was shocked to see a dad coming to a meeting with two twin girls playing a pivotal role in their lives. But there he would be showing up with these two bundles of joy. What is more dear to me now is to see them growing and the bond that they have with their dad. At one of our most recent Zoom meetings, while he is talking and looking seriously, slowly this doll protrudes from the side of his neck. I'm like laughing on the side. These two are living into the stereotype of being holy terrors as they dart in and out of the picture of their father's Zoom meeting. At birth, they both were given blankets, blankets to use. Cecilia didn't bond with her blanket. She could care less, but Eleanor, Eleanor bonded with this handmade knitted blanket and she carried it with her everywhere. And she even gave it a gender and name. It was a she, and the blanket was called BB for Blue Blanket. And BB goes everywhere with Eleanor, everywhere. BB has been a source of strength for her. And on her first day of school, Eleanor packed BB in her backpack so that she could get through the day. Eleanor carries BB all the time because it gives her support and it gives her confidence. Eleanor cares so much about BB, and BB is falling apart. <laughs> BB is fragmented and got holes in it and got <laughs> cotton coming apart, so much so that her parents approached me to help do something with BB. I imagine that forgiveness is like BB in terms of us wearing it. It should be often worn and used by us. Forgiveness is not about letting off others off the hook as much as it is disconnecting ourselves from something that is emotionally toxic. Forgiveness allows us to be released from guilt and pain and live into making this world just and loving people with all of our being. You see, we wear forgiveness because it helps us to live and love each other. We can put it in our backpack and carry it with us all through the day. And sometimes it's the gift we offer others, but many times it's the gift we offer ourselves. I began today talking about Alexandra and the burden of her dad's suicide. 
Alexandra one day shared this story of her dad with 300 people. The story had colored every day of her life. She had carried this burden everywhere, the candy bar that killed her father. And when she shared it with 300 people, she was astonished at the response and at the love and at all the people that were carrying burdens, carrying heaviness around, carrying guilt. Because suicide leaves people with heavy bags of guilt and remorse. If I had done that, if I had seen that, if I had only, she began to open up and it freed her to help others. Alexandra said she had to begin the work of forgiving herself. And then she was able, through her testimony, to help others. So much so that one day a lady calls her and says, as much as I want to live, I want to go. As much as I want to stay on this planet, I really, really, really feel like I got to go. And when I was toying between both and I felt like the urge to go was really pulling me, I remembered your story. And I did not want that to be the story that my child had. People carry incredible burdens and weights for one reason or another. Alexandra certainly did, and the brothers did, and Reuben did, and I'm sure Joseph did. And their dad, oh, the incredible burden he carried as he held Benjamin to him, not letting him go into the world for the burden and the weight of the burden he carried. Lots of heavy stuff we all carry. Have you taken your trash out recently? How does your kitchen smell? Don't forget to do it. And do it often. Because as much as we offer forgiveness to others, it's important that we offer it to ourselves. I say we join Eleanor, call it BB, call it whatever you need to call it. And let us, let us wear forgiveness. Amen.